Hi, my name is Alex Cabral, and I am a fourth year PhD student at Harvard University. Today, I am excited to present work that I completed as a summer intern with Microsoft Research in the summer of 2020. This project stems from the fields of smart cities and environmental sensing, and it fits into the view that my Microsoft colleagues and I have for the future of cities. Cities are increasingly desiring tools for environmental sensing and urban monitoring, especially with the growing challenges of climate change and increased urbanization. Low cost sensors are increasingly in use for environmental and urban monitoring, including in areas such as air pollution, water quality, and traffic data. Low cost sensors are useful in these settings because cities can use a large number of sensors to help cover the gaps that arise in traditional research grade monitoring systems, where sensors are often placed miles apart despite the variability of physical processes on a much smaller scale. So low cost sensors allow researchers and practitioners to capture frequent and hyperlocal data about the systems they care about. However, despite the growing popularity of low cost sensors, there is a lack of information on best practices for deploying sensors in an urban setting. This includes questions such as how many sensors one needs, how far apart they should be placed, and how to maximize limited resources, including budget, time, and hardware. Furthermore, most urban sensor networks focus on stationary sensors, which are convenient for continuous and static data collection. However, stationary sensor networks require coordination with cities or organizations to deploy sensors. They limit the sensor locations to the structures on which they're installed, including light poles or bus shelters. And they often result in sensors being placed higher than ground level, which is an issue for things like air pollution, where there is a variation in the concentrations at different heights. Now there is prior work and research in low cost mobile sensor networks, but many of these networks focus on placing sensors onto vehicles. This makes a lot of sense in terms of the ease of deployment as cities and researchers can utilize existing vehicles that often travel such as garbage trucks and taxis. But it places sensors at a location that is different from where people and citizens are actually walking, which is on the sidewalks. In addition, because many low cost sensors cannot sample every single second, the speed with which vehicles travel means that you get less samples than you would by using slower moving pedestrians. There have been very few studies using pedestrians to carry sensors, and these generally focus on human computer interaction and participant sentiment rather than the actual network design and usefulness of a pedestrian-based mobile sensor network. So in this project, we focus on using a set of mobile sensors and a group of pedestrians to see if we could design a small-scale study that is both replicable and useful in collecting and exposing spatial and temporal variability of various environmental processes in an urban area. The basis of this study is that we recruited seven participants to walk a pre-designated route at a specified time. The participants carry a handheld sensing device that collects particulate matter, which are tiny harmful airborne particles, and meteorological data. And here you can see a picture of a participant carrying the sensor during a walk. So the device itself was entirely designed and created by members of Microsoft Research's hardware team. It includes a printed circuit board with numerous sensors. Here you can see the circuit board with the sensors put in. The device has a temperature and humidity sensor, a particulate matter sensor, which is located behind the PCB in this photo, a GPS module to track locations as participants walked around, local data storage, which helped maximize battery life, and a rechargeable lithium ion battery. Participants were given a charging cable to charge devices during the duration of the study. In addition, the hardware team designed and printed 
enclosures for the devices, which were specifically designed with multiple holes to allow adequate airflow. Now using these devices, the seven participants walked around a pre-designated route that we designed to include a mix of heavy and low traffic streets. It also included two different shared streets. These were streets that were designated by the city of Cambridge, Massachusetts as ones where pedestrians and cyclists had the right of way within the street itself. And these were generally closed off to vehicular traffic with the exception of local residents and delivery vehicles. This was a special initiative during the early days of COVID to allow more space for residents to get out and be active. And our goal with including these streets was to see if we could identify any significant differences in particulate matter on the shared streets versus the non-shared streets. The route was 3.4 miles long, designed to take about one hour of walking. To provide flexibility and ensure that participants were adequately compensated, the participants could begin the loop anywhere, which was usually close to where they lived, but everyone had to walk in the same direction so that we had some way of making comparisons over time and space. The study was conducted over 10 days in August, 2020, and it was divided over two work weeks. So there was one week of data collection from Monday to Friday, then another week the following Monday to Friday. That break in between was used to gather data from the sensors and ensure that they were all still working as expected because all the data was stored locally. Each participant was assigned to a two hour time slot. And the only requirement was that they had to complete the entire walk within their two hour slot. This provided the participants some flexibility in planning their walk, but also ensured that we would get reliable data at around the same time each day throughout the study. So now I'll dive into some of the results that we found. <clears throat> With particulate matter, we did not find any significant results when looking across the different times, the different days of the week, or the shared versus non-shared streets. In fact, nearly all of the values that we had were pretty consistent across these different factors, and any variation we saw was within the stated manufacturer's uncertainty for the sensor, which is plus or minus 10 micrograms per cubic meter. So because most of the values we saw were between five and 25 micrograms per cubic meter or so, it was really difficult to make any large generalizations, especially with the small number of sensors we had. And most of the values really were quite low. However, we did see some variation in comparing the maximum particulate matter concentrations looking at different days of the week. But we found with a deeper dive that the variation was correlated with humidity and not day of the week, which we expected to see from prior research. The temperature results, however, did provide some exciting insights. We found through our study that the devices seem to identify urban heat islands, which are small areas of a city that are hotter than neighboring areas due to things such as lack of tree cover, or the choice of asphalt. Now, as you can see in this image here, there is one block along Harvard Yard that is quite cooler than the preceding and succeeding blocks. This is shown for two different participants on two different days at two different times. And in fact, we found that this was the case for multiple different walks throughout the study. Because of our small sample size, we cannot make any statistically significant claims, but these results are very exciting because urban heat islands are one of the many health relevant exposures that urban residents face. And recent research has shown that satellite measures of heat do not accurately capture these temperatures. So our findings reiterate the need and the usefulness of ground-based sensors to capture the air temperature exposures and to evaluate the temperature within as well as between neighborhoods. Of course, as with any study, we did have some challenges. Because this study occurred during the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic, it is likely that the amount and type of vehicular traffic differed than in other years. So the pollutant values that were recorded might not represent the typical values we'd expect to see in this area. 
In addition, we had a lot of problems with missing data. Although the devices logged errors and telemetry, they were not always helpful in exposing the cause of missing data. Some instances were due to dying batteries, maybe because participants forgot to charge them, but other instances were less clear, especially because the device might start working again later. Ultimately, this highlights the importance of adequate stress testing, error logging, and ideally fully connected devices, which allows for easier device monitoring. So in this quick presentation, I've presented our work, which I believe has a number of contributions to the field. First, we provide a novel and easily adaptable study design that uses mobile sensors to collect environmental data in an urban area. This work also demonstrated through our results how mobile sensors can capture some spatial heterogeneity and their potential to capture temporal variability if, of course, you have a factor that differs enough over time. And finally, especially through our detection of urban heat islets, we highlighted the benefit of mobile sensing for environmental research, for urban planners and smart cities, and hopefully encourage people to realize that mobile sensor networks will be useful in the future and to be sure to include them in future environmental sensing plans. With that, that is the conclusion of my presentation. I hope to hear any comments or questions, please, via email, as you can see on my slide. Thank you.